Good morning class 12 science students and welcome to the new academic session 2021 right so uh, we will be starting environmental science syllabus for class 12 and let me tell you about the syllabus first right you need to understand how the question paper is framed so first and foremost it's a 70 mark question paper all your science subjects are 70 marks 30 marks is project practical work that we will be doing okay later so your theory portion covers 70 marks now out of the 70 marks there is section a the part one the first part of your question paper it covers the entire book with objective questions and your objective questions may be one mark or it may be two marks right so 20 marks that is part one is objective question which covers the entire textbook entire syllabus and then we have part two now part two is divided into three sections right there is section a section b and section c when you get your textbook you can see that your syllabus itself is divided into three sections it is section a section b and section c now you will have to compulsorily attend questions from section a section b and section c you have to study all the chapters in simple language right so in section a we have four chapters in section B we have two chapters and in section uh, C we have two chapters so in totality we have eight chapters the total textbook is eight chapters with different sections and in your examination in ISC you will have to attempt questions from each and every section that is mandatory right so your syllabus is eight chapters and 30 marks practical project work about which I will be discussing later. So today what we'll do is we will start section A chapter 1. I will just try to give you a little bit of idea about what is there in section A and what is there in chapter 1. So chapter 1 of environmental science first chapter is human beings and nature right it talks about human beings and our connection with nature so the first topic that is there it describes how these two terms very important examination term deep and shallow ecology how these two terms came into being and what is the meaning of deep ecology and what is the meaning of shallow ecology right so we need to understand how come these words came into existence when did we start thinking about deep ecology and shallow ecology so this was in the year 1962 I have told you about this earlier also when Rachel Carson a very popular environmentalist she wrote her book silent spring okay examination question Rachel Carson a world popular environmentalist she wrote her book silent spring where she tried to educate the public the entire world about the harm of using pesticides she educated the world about chemical pesticides after this there was sensitization in society and people became aware about environment and its protection and how if you don't protect the environment it is ultimately coming and disturbing your own health right so after this deep ecology took roots now what is the meaning of deep ecology let me try to explain this concept of deep ecology in a very simple language I just give you an example I am protecting forest okay I protect the forest which which is a very important resource of the environment because it gives me uh, firewood because it prevents erosion of the soil because I am benefited from the tree I protect the forest so am I following the principles of deep ecology or shallow ecology when we try to save a resource because it is benefiting mankind my motive is that I will protect that resource because I am benefited out of it then that is shallow 
ecology. But when I see, I will protect nature. I will protect the forest because it is a very important part of the environment. Then my thinking is about deep ecology. So when there is a selfish motive involved behind protection of resources, that is shallow ecology. Why should I save the air? Because it gives me oxygen. I can breathe, I can stay alive. If I'm saving the air, preventing pollution because I am benefiting out of it, I am following shallow ecology. But when I say I should even protect the ant, I should protect the smallest to the largest uh, a resource of the environment, organisms, biodiversity, because it is an integral part of nature, then I am following deep ecology. Okay. Now, you have to understand both these terms, okay, deep ecology and shallow ecology, both the terms were termed, were given, this name was given by the Norwegian philosopher Arne Nice in 1973. He coined the term deep ecology and he was the person who coined the term shallow ecology as well. Right? So, uh, your first part of your syllabus talks of deep and shallow ecology where you are supposed to write the differences, understand what is the meaning of deep ecology, who are the thinkers behind deep ecology and what do the people who believe in shallow ecology feel. Right? So once again, I'm telling you, deep ecology is protection of the environment by a group of people irrespective of the utility that we gain from nature. We are not bothered about man's benefit, but we are protecting each and every resource in the environment because it belongs to nature. But the moment my selfish motives come into it, the moment I start telling myself, I will protect this because I need this to survive. I will protect forest because it gives me firewood. I will protect the soil because I will be harmed. I get agricultural products from there. I will protect the air because I get oxygen. Then if you're protecting only the resources because of which your life is benefited, then you are definitely into shallow ecology. So definitely the right thing for mankind to do is to believe and follow the principles of deep ecology, right? So, uh, the ethics of deep ecology, I'll tell you one or two points. What are the ethics of deep ecology? What does this whole system believe into? Number one, we believe into the well-being of not only humans, but also the non-human part of nature. Not to think of the benefits of only man, that is us, who are the most superior beings in the environment, but also to think about the other organisms. That is one ethic of deep ecology. The second one is that we have to believe in increasing the biodiversity, not killing plants and animals and decreasing diversity, but our intention should be to increase the number of flora and fauna. Then it also says that humans have, though we are superior, we have no right to reduce the richness of nature. So many plants and animals have become extinct because we were never bothered about protecting them. So it says, though you are superior, you have no right to reduce the richness of nature, right? And then it says, very important is that humans should not interfere with the natural ecosystem. This is what we have been doing. We have been interfering with the natural ecosystem. We have been degrading resources to build dams and factories and industries and roads and hotels because we are thinking of our own benefit. So we, today is the time where we have to understand that humans have no right to interfere with the natural ecosystem. These are the principles of deep ecology. And just the opposite is the philosophy of the narrow-minded people who believe in <clears throat> excuse me, who believe in shallow ecology. So I have discussed these two topics with you today, deep and shallow ecology. I have already started your syllabus, section A, chapter 1. So I have told you Rachel Carson and her book, 
Silent Spring. I have told you the difference between the thinkers of deep ecology and shallow ecology. In the next class, I will be discussing with you stewardship of land. Thank you class.